I think it's been a long 36 hours. Welcome back to the Lost Magic Journeys for our live launch coverage of IXPE or the uh, Imaging X ray Preliminary Explorer with NASA and the Italian Space Agency, uh, where you could see earlier the Falcon 9 sitting out on the pad. NASA starting their feet, so let's listen in for an update on the rocket, and we'll go through all the other stuff here in a moment. Giving us a new set of eyes to explore outer space. Over a two year mission, it will use its unique X ray vision to study some of the most mysterious and powerful objects in our universe. Thank you for joining us this morning, live from Kennedy Space Center in Florida. I'm Megan Cruz. And I'm Marie Lewis. Liftoff is set for 1 o'clock a.m. sharp Eastern time from just behind us at historic Launch Complex 39A. ICSPE is NASA's first mission to study polarized X-rays. Simply put, it will help us understand how the universe works. The mission will focus on objects like black holes and exploded stars, honing in on their cosmic X-rays. These rays originate from places where matter is under extreme conditions, violent collisions, enormous explosions, 10 million degree temperatures, and fast rotations. And XP is unique because it will pinpoint X-ray polarization. Soon after launching, XP will deploy its solar arrays, which will power the spacecraft. After about a week in space, XP will extend its boom, lengthening the spacecraft to about the size of a minivan. There that boom goes. About a month after launch, XP will begin its two-year mission using three identical telescopes, each with a set of mirrors. Those mirrors have corresponding detectors on the opposite end of the boom. The mirrors collect X-rays from the celestial objects and focus them on the detectors, which make an image of those X-rays and measure polarization. Polarization is a property of light, like brightness and color. X-rays are a form of high energy light that's invisible to the human eye. By studying the polarized X-rays of these powerful objects, we can learn more about what they're made of and how they work. Today's launch is managed by NASA's Launch Services Program in cooperation with the agency's Marshall Space Flight Center, the Italian Space Agency, and Ball Aerospace. And here are some other interesting facts about XP by the numbers. The bottom of the observatory, called the Spacecraft Bus, is nearly four feet in diameter. Up top is the mirror module support structure deck that's almost five feet in diameter. The boom is 12 feet long, bringing the fully extended observatory height to 17 feet. Ixby's solar array wingspan is eight feet. Put it all together and Ixby weighs 727 pounds, roughly the same as a polar bear. It will study about 40 celestial objects during its first year in space, with more detailed follow-up observations in its second year. And Ixby arrived at Cape Canaveral Space Force Station on November 5th for final pre-launch testing. Teams attached it to the Falcon 9 rocket last week, and now here we are, stacked and vertical on the pad, ready for launch in just about 26 minutes. And with that update, hearing everything was progressing well, we are expecting SpaceX to go live here in about the next 10 minutes to give an update on the status of the rocket. But if you guys have questions, as always, you can send those in in the chat. Just take us at the launch pad, and we will be answering those as we go along. Also, take a moment, hit that like and subscribe button. As I was saying when I muted myself, welcome here to the launch pad and our live launch coverage of today's IXPE launch, a joint mission of NASA and the Italian Space Agency being launched by SpaceX from Historic Pad 39A. Uh, we're glad to have you all here with us this evening. I'm glad you're here. I'm like half here, uh, but we are excited to be uh, seeing this third launch in 36 hours. Uh, another exciting telescope uh, and uh, observer getting sent up. Uh, we've been seeing a lot of these new historic uh, missions getting underway over the last few months as NASA really starts to ramp up getting ready for deep space exploration and that next generation of information from the James Webb Space Telescope that's launching in just under two weeks. And of course, we'll be live for that. Uh, today, as we said, launching from pad 39A on top of booster 10 61-5, which will be landing downrange on Just Read the Instructions with the support of Doug. There's no tug today, just all Doug and Just Read the Instructions. The fairing halves will splash down 665 kilometers downrange, be scooped up by Doug, which will then go back, get the drone ship, and uh, they will head back to port. 
Weather has been 80% go, uh, both for the range, uh, close range and downrange. Uh, today, this is the 131st launch of Falcon 9. This is the 76th reflight of a booster with the 27th reflight of a booster in 2021. They're going for their 97th booster landing here tonight. The 28th launch of SpaceX in 2021, which is pushing their record further and further into the history books. Their record last year, I believe, was 26. Uh, and this is the 128th orbital launch attempt of 2021. If it's your first time here, here at the Launchpad, it's our mission to inform and inspire the explorers of tomorrow. And we believe space is better together, so we invite you to be active in the chat. You can do so there. Consider joining us over on our Discord. We're hanging out in live comms, uh, and we uh, invite you to hit that subscribe button so you never miss another live launch, exclusive interview, uh, and a lot of exciting stuff coming up later this year. Uh, we're going to continue listening in to Mission Control uh, to hear updates as they progress towards the countdown liftoff time uh, of 1 a.m. Eastern Time. So let's keep listening into Mission Control. Going to talk about that as well as this historic pad right here, Launch Pad 39A, with the first ever dedicated science mission launching from here. We'll also talk about the history of that booster. But for now, back to Megan and Marie. All right, thanks, Daryl and Mick. Uh, we want to bring in now NASA's Jasmine Hopkins, who is at a nearby viewing location. Yeah, she's there with the director of NASA's Marshall Space Flight Center in Alabama, which is the lead center for the mission, right, Jasmine? That is correct, Megan. And we're going to have a great view of launch from right here at the balcony of the Operations and Support Building at Kennedy. And I am so glad to welcome Jody Singer. Thank you so much for being here. Well, thank you so much for having me. Absolutely. This is a fantastic time, an it exciting is. moment. It is. We're very excited. And Jody, tell me, Marshall has been at the heart of the XP mission. How are you feeling to be here for launch? Well, it's, it's one of those things that, you know, you see all the excitement, mm -hmm. you see the sacrifices, you see how much energy our, our team, right. and it's our team, it's Marshall, but it's, you know, right. the Italian Space Agency and Ball Aerospace, as well as many other folks. But our Marshall team is extremely excited right. about the science that we're going to get out of it, uh, the new discoveries, and, right. you know, we haven't done this before, so... We'll not know what we'll find until we actually uh, get it in operation, but right. it's just really exciting time and, and a lot of pride. It is, it is, and you know, we're, we're very excited with you. We're all going to discover these things together, um, but can you tell me what has Marshall been doing to prepare for the XP mission and what will operations look like over the next few years? Well, definitely, I'll tell you, there's been a lot of hard work, for sure. But right. a lot of our scientists, engineers, uh, working with our partners, mm -hmm. but definitely working hard. You know, particularly Marshall Space Flight Center is responsible right. for the mirrors. Um, there's mm -hmm. over 72 mirrors on oh, wow. it, and those mirrors are very critical to be yeah. able mm -hmm. to see the light mm -hmm. um, that is coming from the different objects that we'll be pointing at. Right. And then sending it down to the detector mm -hmm. and being able then to understand what we're seeing. And so it's just a unimaginable a right. lot of the things, you know, from deep stars to a lot of the energy, mm -hmm. seeing what's we don't even know what we'll be seeing. Right, so, right. so that's going to be fantastic, and, and that'll be a lot of hard work. Um, you know, when the XB uh, is commissioned mm -hmm. um, in about a month, it will, you know, it has to go through its different stages and check right, out right. to be operational in space. But once it's there, um, it'll be a two-year mission. Uh, mm -hmm. There's going to be a lot of the things that we'll be looking at, neutron stars, understanding right. how planets were formed, understanding all about um, things mm -hmm. that we don't even imagine yet right, that we're going right. to see because we've never seen it before. Exactly. We've estimated what it would be like, but getting to see it. And then there'll be um, continuous uh, research that'll be done. And it's mm -hmm. over 12 countries and over 120 more scientists from all across oh, wow. uh, the world that'll be getting this information. And right. that's something that's great for the United States, but it's also great for partnerships. We go it together. Is learning about our universe and understanding our world. Right, right. We absolutely we go together. I love I love that statement. And, you know, the Marshall team has been working behind the scenes on this to uncover the mysteries of the universe. So what do you want the world to know about your team at Marshall? Well, I think they're pretty special. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> this is a great team, great team of scientists and engineers uh, working hard, mm -hmm. dedicated and, uh, you know, really just giving it their all mm -hmm. and really excited about the unknown possibilities, understanding our world. In addition right. to that, Marshall Space Flight Center, you know, lifting off the, from the surface of the Earth, traveling to and through, yes. living and understanding in our world. Right. And now 
you know, the unknown mysteries of our universe. So, right. you know, it's just going to be a lot of fun. It's so bright, the future. Yeah. And, you know, yeah. And it's not just about us. It's about mm. the next generation understanding our world Absolutely. and where we're going. Absolutely. So the future is so bright. Yes, it is. Jody, thank you so much for being here. And now we're going to get a forecast from our launch weather officer, Will Ulrich of the Space Launch Delta 45. Over to you, Will. Thanks, Jasmine. Conditions look excellent for an early morning launch this morning, despite the fact that we have some clouds moving overhead the state. And that's thanks in part to a weak cool front that we're slowly seeing sag south uh, over the area. A live look at satellite imagery shows those clouds moving from the eastern Gulf of Mexico and into the western Atlantic Ocean. Now, my colleagues at the 45th Weather Squadron are actively evaluating nine lightning launch commit criteria to ensure those clouds pose no threat of both natural and rocket-triggered lightning. And the good news is that since we started evaluating the weather at L-2 hours, conditions look very favorable. Now, Mike McAleen and the launch weather officer for this mission just gave his final weather brief at L-1 hours and gave a greater than 90% go for weather. And the good news is that should we need to utilize tomorrow's backup window, weather conditions remain the same with an 80% go for weather. Marie and Megan, back to you. All right, thank you, Will. Uh, great to hear fantastic news about the weather. Uh, it is currently T minus 18 minutes from liftoff. Yeah. And as we close in on that T minus 18 minutes, we're going to keep this live view of the Falcon as it'll really start to come alive over the next uh, 15 minutes or so as they get ready for that strong back retract. And then, of course, lift off. If you're wondering who I'm talking to, that's the Discord. They're hanging out over there. Uh, so if you want to, you can join in there. Hang over in live comms. Get a behind-the-scenes camera tonight of uh, me in the studio, but also we'll be chatting up in there as well. Uh, and, of course, hanging out following the launch. SpaceX getting ready to go live but if you're just joining us welcome you're just in time for our live launch coverage of tonight's ixpe launch from pad 39a at the kennedy space center uh, this is a nasa space observatory comprised of three identical telescopes that will measure the polarization of cosmic x-rays uh, so a very exciting mission it'll last about two years uh, with two primary scientific objectives first understand radiations procedures uh, and the proportion of cosmic x-rays and second to general study the relativity and quantum mechanics in extreme environments so some uh, some big science they're uh, working on uh, we're excited to see what comes out of this as it deploys and gets commissioned over the next month as always if you guys have questions you can send those in in the chat just take us at the launch pad and we'll be glad to answer those as the evening progresses at this point we are deep into prop load uh, and we'll be waiting for that lc poll to occur here uh, in a little bit uh, we'll of course patch in spacex for a full update on the state of the booster uh, and the launch site here in about 30 seconds but we're glad to have you all here with us this evening. If it's your first time here, take a moment, hit that like and subscribe button, and share out the broadcast, let people know we are now less than T-minus 16 minutes and counting until liftoff of the IXP E or the IXP Explorer, and we would love to see them in here with us tonight. Uh, also, remember, it is launch day, so 10% off everything over on our shop, promo code launch day. X-39A, awaiting its 1 a.m. Eastern Time launch from Kennedy Space Center in Florida. Good evening and welcome to our launch cover coverage for XP or the Imaging X-ray Polarimetry Explorer for our customer NASA. My name is Shiva Bharadvaj and I'm a space operations engineer and I'm joining you from SpaceX headquarters in Hawthorne, California. The Imaging X-ray Polarimetry Explorer is NASA's first mission dedicated to measuring the polarization of X-rays from a variety of cosmic sources, objects like black holes and neutron stars. We'll have a little more on the science XP will conduct a bit later on in the webcast, but for now, let's take a closer look at the rocket on your screen. This is Falcon 9, our two-stage liquid-fueled launch vehicle. It's standing vertical at Launch Complex 39A. Now, the booster supporting today's mission is flying for the fifth time and this also marks SpaceX's second flight-proven launch vehicle for NASA's Launch Services Program, or LSP. Now, this booster first flew in November of last year. It since has carried three Dragons and eight astronauts to the International Space Station on the Crew-1, Crew-2, and CRS-23 missions. It also flew the Sirius XM-8 satellite to orbit earlier on this year. 
Now, if you're new to our webcast or are unfamiliar with the Falcon 9, that bottom two thirds of the vehicle is what we refer to as the first stage. It's uh, covered by some Space white clouds around it, power. but it's also covered in some soot from its previous flights, uh, flights that you might catch in between. Now, the first stage's primary role is to accelerate all the way to the edge of space with the help of nine Merlin engines that it has at its base. There, it'll drop off the second stage and the payload. Then, the first stage will make its way back to planet Earth, where we'll attempt to recover it on our autonomous drone ship named Just Read the Instructions. Now, if you turn your attention back to that section above the first stage and above that black carbon fiber interstage, you'll see Falcon 9's second stage. About two and a half minutes into the flight, the stages will separate, the second stage will ignite its single Merlin vacuum engine and carry itself and the XP payload into a circular orbit. Now, if the launch wasn't cool enough, XP also marks the first Falcon 9 launch into an equatorial orbit. That means that the satellite will fly into an orbit that goes along the equator, which we refer to as having an inclination of about zero degrees. Getting to an equatorial orbit from Florida requires a lot of rocket performance and propellant, so we won't be able to land the first stage back on land. Instead, we'll attempt to land the first stage on our drone ship stationed off the coast of Florida while the second stage completes its orbital insertion burn. Now, the second stage will perform a second burn about 20 minutes later to get to that final circular equatorial orbit, followed shortly after by satellite deployment around T plus 33 minutes. Today's mission also marks the smallest dedicated payload that a Falcon 9 rocket has ever launched by a pretty large margin, making for a very roomy payload fairing at liftoff. Now, speaking of which, the fairing is that nose cone structure at the very top of the vehicle above the second stage. The fairing protects the XP satellite from aerodynamic heating, loads, and contamination during the ascent portion of the mission. Now, it's made of two fairing halves. Both of those are brand new today, and we're planning to recover them on our recovery ship named Bob, which is stationed out in the Atlantic Ocean. Now, we're coming up on about T minus 12 and a half minutes to liftoff. The launch vehicle and satellite teams are continuing towards an on-time liftoff scheduled for 1 a.m. Eastern time. Falcon 9 team began their final checks at about T minus two hours. Most recently, we completed the ground team poll to proceed with propellant load and launch that happened at T minus 38 minutes. We began loading propellants at the T minus 35 minute mark. Falcon 9 is a bi-propellant vehicle. That means we have two propellants on board, a fuel and an oxidizer. For Falcon 9, our fuel is a refined form of kerosene that we call RP-1 or rocket propellant 1. And to burn that fuel, we need an oxidizer. On Earth, most combustion or burning uses oxygen from, from the atmosphere as its oxidizer. And that oxygen makes up about 21% of the air that you and I breathe. However, in space, we don't have an atmosphere to provide that oxygen or other oxygen-bearing molecules, so rockets need to carry their own. On Falcon 9, the oxidizer is super-chilled liquid oxygen, what we call densified LOX, and we chill it well below its boiling point, which increases its density and allows us to load more onto the first and second stage LOX tanks. Now, currently, we are fully loaded on fuel on the second stage. Fueling is... Uh, Fuel loading is going underway on the first stage. That'll continue about until T minus six minutes when it will complete. And liquid oxygen loading is loading on both the first and second stages and causing that, uh, those plumes that you see around the vehicle. And if you're just joining us, welcome here to our live launch coverage of the IXPE launch from Pad 39A. I know we saw in the chat a few of you are down in the region. We know Marcus and Zach are also uh, down there as well. So if you guys are in the region uh, and take any photos or videos tonight, take a moment, send them in to us over on Twitter at, at TLPN underscore official or to the link in the chat or send it in on the Discord. Uh, and you may just get featured during the coast phase and deployment or get retweeted over on Twitter. We love getting to see what your guys' experience was like, so you can send those in. Uh, there's a section on Discord called Share Your Stuff. Drop it in there, and we'll be keeping an eye on that all night. Uh, this is, of course, launching from Florida. Uh, we're launching to the east, so... 
Uh, if you are along the eastern coast of Florida, look up. You may be able to see uh, this booster launching here in now less than 10 minutes from now. We will pull up also the live telemetry from SpaceX once the launch actually begins. There may be a slight out of sequence there just because of the time delay from SpaceX, but it'll give you a general idea of where the first and second stage are uh, as it goes through that process. Paul, you're going to stay up and watch this on a school night, 10.50 where I am. I, Well, thank you for staying here, Paul. We're glad to uh, have you here. It's uh, 10.50 here as well. So luckily it won't be too long uh, of a mission here today. Uh, it's not something we're going to be staying live for, you know, hours and hours and hours to see deployment uh, for it. We are listening for when that deployment will occur. But uh, the second stage engine will complete its second burn 29 minutes into flight. So we may have a little bit of a coast phase here tonight, but we're going to keep listening in to SpaceX Mission Control for an update on the Falcon. Uh, and uh, glad to have you here. Liberty Dude, loved your Astronaut Canada interviews. Congrats on the opportunity. Thanks, Liberty Dude. We got one more coming your way tomorrow. We introduce you to Jessica. We're grateful for uh, NASA Johnson Space Center for partnering with us and uh, making that happen uh, on very short notice, but connecting us with those astronauts. And we hope to work more with Johnson and the astronaut training facility here in the future. We've already got some interviews uh, that we're working on on the docket for 2022, so make sure you stay tuned for those as well. SpaceX running through a similar simulation simulation uh, to what we saw uh, NASA do briefly here uh, on what the deployment will actually look like over the next couple of weeks. Uh, full size is just the size of a minivan once it's fully deployed. A very small payload, as they said, for the Falcon 9. Uh, today, give you an idea of what you guys can expect over the next eight minutes. At seven minutes and counting, engine chill will begin on the Falcon 9. T minus one minute, command will flight computer to begin the final pre launch checks. Also, at T minus one minute, all the tanks will pressurize to flight pressure. T minus 45 seconds, launch director will verify a go no go for launch. T minus three seconds, engine control commands the ignition sequence to start, and Falcon 9 will, of course, lift off there. We also will be seeing coming up here is Strongback Retract at about three, two to three minute mark, uh, which is when we will actually see that white bar release a clamp around Falcon and retract away. It will mostly retract during the actual launch sequence, but that's there to give just some extra support while Falcon waits out at the pad. Following uh, liftoff, Miko expected two and a half minutes into flight, followed by stage separation and that uh, for ignition. Fairing deployment, three minutes into flight. Uh, and we are expecting to see that landing burn occur about uh, just under nine minutes after liftoff. So, uh, as always, a very quick sequence of events with the Falcon 9, but hopefully we will see a clear uh, launch occur here today. We're going to listen into Mission Control Hawthorne uh, as we count down the last six and a half minutes. If you're just joining us, though, take a moment. Let us know where you're watching from. Make sure you hit that like and subscribe, subscribe button. You're watching our live launch coverage right here on the launch pad. ...is more organized with the two types of waves vibrating in the same direction. You might have heard of polarized sunglasses. Boaters and fishermen use these lenses to reduce glare from sunlight across a body of water. Water reflects light in a way that causes some of it to vibrate in a direction parallel to the water's surface. Polarized lenses block light moving horizontally, but let other light through. Much like the way light changes when it bounces off of water, in space, light becomes polarized depending on where it comes from and what it passes through. By measuring the amount and direction of polarization, Ixby gives us clues about the shapes, structures, and inner workings of all types of objects that shine in bright X-rays. The Ixby Observatory has three identical telescopes with three main parts, mirrors, detectors, and an extendable mast, or boom, that separates them. Each mirror assembly contains 24 nested mirrors that collect and focus X-rays. Located at the focal point of the mirrors, sensitive detectors made with international partners in Italy are the secret behind Ixby's unique X-ray vision. They track and measure all four properties of incoming light, 
It's arrival time, direction, energy, and most importantly, polarization. Over the two years of its prime mission, ICSPE will observe more than 50 brilliant objects, like the leftovers of huge stars that exploded into supernovae, the supermassive black hole at the heart of our own Milky Way galaxy. And, and we are seeing that strong back retract uh, beginning here uh, as we come down to four minutes, 30 seconds until liftoff. Testing competing theories about pulsars and the details of how Einstein's theory of general relativity works. New insights from ICSPE will help us paint a fuller picture of the universe confirming or confounding our thinking in the years to come. Now we're just uh, over T minus four minutes away from liftoff of the Falcon 9 carrying the XP satellite. You can see the uh, strong back arms, the clamp arms that are around the second stage are starting to open. Those are attached to a structure, that truss structure called the transporter erector or the TE. And in preparation for launch, will open up those clamp arms, the transporter erector will uh, slowly retract away from the stage. As we get closer to T minus zero, ground hydraulic systems will further pull the TE away, clearing the way for Falcon 9 as it proceeds into its liftoff. Uh, we refer to the transporter erector sometimes as the strong back, and you heard that call out on the loops. Now the transporter erector is used to roll Falcon 9 out to the launch pad and raises it into the vertical launch position. It also routes power, fluid, uh, and communications to both the Stage rocket photos complete. and the satellite. We just heard a call out there for some of those fluids that completed loading on the first stage. We've completed loading all propellants on Falcon 9's first stage. Now the first stage is connected to the base of that transporter erector by a hinge structure. And again, that'll retract further away from the vehicle in preparation for launch. The white gas that you're seeing around the vehicle is just from that chilled uh, liquid oxygen and some periodic venting around the vehicle. When it comes into contact with the moist Florida air, it causes water vapor to condense and forms literal clouds around the vehicle. Now at this point in the countdown, we're about 20 seconds away from completing propellant load on the second stage. And once that's complete, the uh, propellant loading will be complete on both the first and second stage. As always at that T minus two minute mark, let's see a go, no go in the chat for stage launch Stage two here. lock load is complete. There's stage two lock load complete and we're waiting to hear for So with that call out, we've completed offer. loading propellants onto Falcon 9. Coming up next, we'll see uh, some venting from the transporter erector. We'll clear out the liquid oxygen from the propellant feeder lines and you'll see that as some white venting around the vehicle. And then the next activity after will happen around T minus 60 seconds when Falcon 9 transitions to internal control via its autonomous flight computers. Yes, close out, started. Now, once Falcon 9 has taken over the launch countdown, it'll continue to have control of Falcon 9 through the rest of the mission. The launch director will give their final go for launch if all conditions continue to look good. And then at about T minus two seconds, we'll ignite those nine Merlin 1D engines for liftoff. Falcon is in startup. So with that, the XP satellite continues to look healthy. Falcon 9 team is tracking no issues. Falcon 9 is in startup. LD go for XP launch. So the launch director has given their final go for launch. So with that, we're proceeding into the last 30 seconds of the terminal count. Give me 30 seconds. Let's listen in as Falcon 9 takes XP into orbit. T minus 15 seconds. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 
Three, two, one, zero. Ignition. Lift off. Go Falcon. Go hunting. ISPE. Vehicle is pitching downrange. Nominal first stage chamber pressures. plus 40 seconds into flight, successful liftoff of the Falcon 9 from Launch Complex 39A at the Kennedy nominal. Space Center. We're carrying the XB satellite into an equatorial orbit, and we just throttled down the nine Merlin 1D engines in preparation for the next event. That's the point of max Q or maximum aerodynamic pressure. That coming up in about 10 seconds. Vehicle is supersonic. Max Q. So with that, we are through the highest stresses on the vehicle from the combination of our increasing velocity and the decreasing atmospheric density. Coming up next, the next event in about a minute will be MECO, that's main engine cutoff. We'll shut down those nine Merlin 1D engines in preparation for the next event, stage separation. The first and second stages will separate. And then at about T plus two minutes, 44 seconds, We'll have SES-1, or second engine start number one. That's where the Merlin vacuum engine on the second stage will ignite to carry the second stage and the XB payload into orbit. So again, those three events coming up in succession, MECO, main engine cutoff, followed by stage separation, and then SES-1. And this view, looking down on the Merlin 1D engines from the first stage, you can see the plume expanding as the atmospheric density drops off, as we get higher and higher in our atmosphere. Okay, that stage separation. First stage engine cutoff. Stage separation confirmed. So those three events successful, main engine cutoff, stage separation, left hand side of your screen, you can see a view of the first stage deploying its grid fins, starting its recovery sequence. The second stage on the right hand side of your screen, we've got a shot of the Merlin vacuum engine glowing uh, as it continues its ignition to carry XB into orbit. And in the bottom right of your corner, you can see the live telemetry of both of them with their trajectories, with the booster beginning its way back down to the drone ship. Just read the instructions. And that second stage now under fire, increasing its altitude and orbit uh, to its uh, at least first orbit before it'll have to complete some burns. Expecting fairing separation here coming up in just a few seconds. Flying for this mission. Probably won't separation see it confirmed. unless they have the internal camera. There we go. There's confirmation of the fairing deploy. The XB satellite now getting directly exposed to the vacuum of space. And those fairing halves again will be attempting to recover those with our recovery vessel named Bob, which is out in the Atlantic Ocean. So if you're just joining us, welcome. We're about T plus four and a half, uh, excuse me, four minutes and 20 seconds into today's mission. Acquisition of signal for me. On your screen is a view of the Merlin vacuum engine on the second stage. It's uh, completing its first of two planned burns to take the XB satellite into an initial parking orbit. We had an on-time liftoff at 1 a.m. Eastern time. The first stage that carried the second stage uh, this far separated and is on its way back to planet Earth. Its next major activity will happen at about T plus six minutes and 20 seconds. 
and that'll be for the entry burn, where it'll ignite a few of its engines to slow down in preparation for entering the Earth's atmosphere. Now, during the entry burn, we'll relight three of the Merlin 1D engines on the first stage. That'll start with the center engine, followed shortly after by uh, two of the side engines. That'll slow down the vehicle as we pass back into Earth's atmosphere. And we need to slow down on the first stage to reduce the entry forces, which helps us recover and reuse that first stage. Reusability is a key part stage two on nominal trajectory. of lowering the cost of space flight which enables more investment into the critical scientific hardware and research. Now, Falcon 9's first stage that supported today's mission will perform this entry burn for the fifth time, having previously done so for the Crew-1, Crew-2, Sirius XM-8, and Sirius 23 missions. And those brand new fairing halves will also re-enter Earth's atmosphere for the first time. The second stage continuing to burn. Its burn will continue until about T plus eight minutes. And we've heard periodic call outs that we are seeing nominal performance and following a nominal trajectory. Stage one FTS is saved. On the second stage. Stage one entry burn startup. So left hand side of your screen, you can see the grid fins and you can see the plume from the entry burn. At this point, we are firing three of the Merlin 1D engines. And uh, we're decelerating the first stage, but we're still going pretty fast. So as we're flying into the Earth's atmosphere, that soot is actually getting kicked back. Excuse me, the plume is getting kicked back. Stage one, entry burn, shut down. Onto the first stage. And the plume uh, does is carbon-based, so That'll deposit a nice layer of soot on the first stage's surface. Stage two on nominal trajectory. Nominal shutdown of the entry burn. The next activity for the first stage will be the landing burn. That'll happen at about T plus eight minutes and 10 seconds. Second stage continuing to look nominal. Now the engines on both the first and second stage are different. The Merlin engines Merlin on the first stage are optimized for sea level thrust but the Merlin vacuum engine that you see on your screen is optimized for vacuum. And the difference there is how much we can expand Stage the pressurized two, is gases that are being produced by the Merlin Stage engine. Stage one, transonic. Call out there for stage one being transonic, so it's transitioning from supersonic speeds back to subsonic speed. Be interesting to see if we get some live views of the landing here tonight. And next events coming up will be second engine cutoff number one, that shutdown of this Merlin vacuum engine. And uh, pretty close after, we'll hear a call out for landing burn startup the on the first stage. Coming up to Seco 1. Stage 1, landing burn. Landing burn startup. And back engine cutoff. So shutdown of the Merlin vacuum engine. We've got landing burn startup on the first stage. Left-hand side of your screen is a shot from the drone ship. Nominal Stage orbit. one, landing leg deploy. And correction, that's a shot from the first stage. And on the right-hand side is a shot from the drone ship. We've deployed the landing legs, hopefully for a soft touchdown on just read the instructions. Stage one, landing confirmed. <laughs> and that, that is a... 97th successful recovery of a first stage on our drone ship named Just Read the Instructions. This And look at that. They're all, almost perfectly centered. The last one was perfect. This one's pretty dang close. So that booster 1061-5 on its way back and has had a successful landing. It's in its nominal orbit. So after this coast phase, we'll light the Merlin vacuum engine for a second time around T plus 29 minutes to put it into the final circular orbit for payload deployment. We'll see you back here in about 20 minutes, but in the meantime, enjoy the space jams and the views of the stages. And while we have this coast phase, we are going to answer some of your questions. So you can send those in the chat, tag us uh, at the launch pad, and we will be able to answer those. So it looks like Marcus sent in uh, a photo. Ooh, a beautiful shot. Wow, that one's really good, Marcus. You can definitely see a little bit of clouds there. 
Some great shots from Zach as well. We'll get those downloaded, pulled up here during the coast phase. If you guys took any photos or videos, send them to us over on Twitter or on the Discord, and we'll look at pulling those up here as we have about a 20-minute coast phase. If you guys have questions, you can send those in the chat as well, and we will answer those over to the next little bit of time as well. Double checking one feed that we have here. It looks like we may still be able to have the joint feed. Oh, there we go. Now they're merging. No. So just the one feed of that tracking angle there. I was hoping we'd still have the second stage engine that we'd be able to look at during this coast phase. But it uh, looks like we're going to just have the map uh, as usual. Joe, scroll back about uh, 12 minutes and you'll be able to watch it there. Virginia, too bad you can't correct the camera on the drone ships during the booster landing so we can see it clearly. Fortunately, I don't have the power for that. Uh, it's a lot to do is actually the connection. The camera's fine. Uh, it's just the connection gets... Uh, so shaken up by the booster landing and uh, throwing the ship a little bit around that that's why they have uh, some of those issues there. Do we have a count on how many we've done this year? Yes, we do. Uh, we are at, I believe I have that pulled here. This was the 100 and 28th orbital launch of 2021. And of course, we've had multiple suborbital flights as well. Thanks, William. Appreciate it. We do know that. That's just how delays work with uh, them sending us the feed and then us sending the feed out. So, appreciate it. Uh, Heather, what's our next live event? The next one's going to be New Shepard uh, taking place uh, a little bit later uh, on Saturday. It was supposed to be coming up tomorrow morning, but uh, due to some weather, they did have a delay. Uh, so, uh, a little bit of delay for that. A couple more days on the ground for Michael Strahan and the other five uh, space tourists that will be going up. But uh, we will, of course, bring you that live coverage there on Saturday morning. Good landing. Can't wait to see another. Absolutely. Great to have you here. Awesome. Great job, SpaceX. Yeah, another great landing right on target. Uh, so routine is wonderful. Yep. Uh, first stage is a big empty can. That's one way of looking at it. Yeah, to need to uh, fuel it up, put a second stage and a payload on top, and good to go. We also have James Webb coming up on December 22nd, so we're super excited to uh, have that with you all as well. So you can always keep an eye on the channel. We try to pre-schedule events at least 24 to 48 hours in advance of a launch uh, once we get those finalized T-0s and those weather reports. Uh, so we're glad to have that here. Liberty, dude, thank you so much for that super chat. If we sent a gingerbread man to the moon, would that be the first ginger on the moon? Oh, you, you yes, I read that out loud. Um, I don't know. Chat, what do you think? Let's turn it on the chat. Thank you, Liberty, dude, for supporting us in that way. I do appreciate that. Uh, good to see you in the chat as well. Uh, beautiful landing, it really was. Alicia's more next year, I expect. Yeah, that's the goal. They're definitely expecting to have more launches uh, scaling up next year. Hopefully, we'll see some testing of some new rockets as well. Uh, not only Starship, but some of the others. So, we'll be uh, glad to have that. Uh, Julian, yes, it'll be nice to finally have a nice sleep tonight, not be up at 4 a.m. But you never know what Starbase is going to do. So, we got to keep an eye on that. Uh, as a reminder, it is launch day over on the TLP shop, so if you want to place an order, use promo code launch day. It gets 10% off everything. We're doing our last call for the holidays and last call for anything for James Webb, uh, so make sure you uh, check that out uh, before it goes, and then we'll have some, uh, maybe some exciting new stuff in the new year as well. Double check what Twitter is going off, just SpaceX tweeting a whole bunch of stuff. We're really glad to have you here. We need a James Webb stress support group. I agree. We can do that uh, over in the Discord. We can all do some deep breathing. The whole world will be on edge with James Webb. It's only a $10 million saddle, uh, telescope observatory. It's just $10 billion that they dropped once. But uh, we'll see what happens. 
Have a great night, Virginia. Feel I hope you're feeling a bit better, but you get some rest, and we'll see you next time. What will the next Rocket after Raptor 2 look like? Uh, Raptor 2 we will see, and then there's going to be a new Raptor, uh, or a new engine. We don't know the name. We don't know what it'll look like. Uh, I think it's very possible we could see a new vacuum Raptor type engine. Um, because if the Raptors work on booster to get stuff into orbit, what we really need to do is be optimizing what we can do with Starship on orbit and on those interplanetary injection burns. Um, so I think possibly we may not see a change to the actual boosters engines, but a change to Starship's engines. Maybe it's uh, some smaller Raptors and then larger vacuums. Maybe it's only vacuums. We'll have to wait and see. Yes, James Webb, December 22nd. Yeah, Michael, how was it? Was that uh, everything you thought of? That's awesome. Uh, I highly doubt we'll see nuclear just yet, but uh, yeah, I hope that uh, had a great sight for you, for a number of you that were down there. Uh, so that's awesome to see. Joe, your merch shift this morning. Awesome. We'll keep an eye on that uh, as it goes. Uh, double check. Some of you do have orders where you place an order of multiple items. Sometimes they do ship individually. Uh, if they do and you only get given one shipping number uh, and stuff arrives but you don't have everything, we are trying to keep on top of that if there are multiple tracking numbers. But uh, we'll, if you get something and not everything's there, reach out. We'll get you that secondary tracking number if we haven't already. We're going to uh, turn up uh, a little bit of tunes here uh, as we await uh, about another 15 minutes or so until that second burn, followed by deployment. But take a moment, hit that like and subscribe button. It really does help us out. And stay with us for our live coverage of the IXPE launch, or the XP as they've been calling it at NASA, uh, here from Pad 39A on a way to its deployment orbit uh, to begin its two-year mission. But stay with us.
coming up on that second stage uh, ignition again. So we're going to tune in Mission Control Audio, but we wanted to bring up a couple photos in here. A launch photo from Zach down in Melbourne, Florida, who was also hanging out with Marcus, who got this launch street photo. If you want to see those in their full high quality, head on over to the Discord and check those out. Uh, but thanks for sending those in. Those are super awesome. That launch photo also looks like the meteor that crashed near my city last night that everyone freaked out that it was the end of the world. No, just a meteor. Well, those are awesome. Thanks for sending those in. Let's listen back into SpaceX Mission Control as we come up to that second stage ignition here in just a matter of uh, a couple of minutes and then deployment shortly after. Welcome back to our webcast of the Falcon 9 mission carrying the Imaging X-ray Polarimetry Explorer, or XB satellite for our customer NASA. We've had a great mission so far. The Falcon 9 launched on time at 1 a.m. Eastern time from Kennedy Space Center. We successfully recovered the first stage and the second stage completed its first burn, taking the XB satellite into its initial parking orbit. Now we're just about uh, 10 or so seconds away from a second ignition of the Merlin vacuum engine. That'll carry the second stage and the XB satellite into the final payload deployment orbit. So that uh, second burn called second engine start number two coming up shortly. And back startup. So there's ignition of the second stage engine. This burn was expected to last about 40 seconds. Now the initial orbit that the first stage, uh, excuse me, the second stage went into, put it at about a 28 degree inclination um, with a high apogee and a fairly low perigee. This burn is taking us down to zero inclination. That means we'll be flying over the equator and it'll put us into a circular 600 by 600 kilometer orbit. You're looking at live views of the Merlin vacuum engine and some uh, photobombs from planet Earth behind it. Terminal guidance. So with that, the second stage engine, the Merlin vacuum engine has shut down. The launch team will be reviewing the orbital parameters. Nominal orbit insertion. And with that call out, we are in the expected circular orbit right above the equator, about 600 kilometers above the Earth's surface. surface. Now, as a reminder, the XB satellite is still attached to Falcon 9's second stage. We've got payload deployment coming up at about T plus 33 minutes. Now, if you're just joining us, we had an on-time launch at about 1 a.m. Eastern time, followed by successful ascent, then stage separation. We successfully recovered our first stage, and we've completed two second stage burns uh, and the booster, and actually there's a, a live shot of the second stage and the XB satellite above planet Earth, currently over Africa. Now the booster that supported the XB launch today Acquisition of signal, Melindy. successfully landed for the fifth time on our drone ship named Just Read the Instructions that was stationed out in the Atlantic Ocean off the coast of Florida. Reusability is a key part of SpaceX's mission to increasing the access to space, and we also had brand new fairing halves on today's mission. We'll be attempting to recover both of those on a recovery vessel named Bob. That is another great shot of NASA's Imaging X-ray Polarimetry Explorer, or XB. This mission is the first satellite that's dedicated to measuring the polarization of X-rays coming from high energy objects like black holes and supernova. It's the first 
uh, NASA Launch Services Program mission that's ever been launched from the Launch Pad 39A, a historic launch pad at Cape Canaveral. And it's SpaceX's fifth as part of that program. This program helps launch spacecraft to observe planet Earth, visit other planets, and to explore our universe. Now, the XP satellite does mark also Falcon 9's first launch to an equatorial orbit. The satellite is currently in a uh, zero degree, degree inclination orbit above our equator at about 600 kilometers above the Earth's surface. We're about a minute away from payload deployment. And uh, once we get into payload deployment, the XB satellite will then get to proceed with its two-year mission. Now, XB is an orbital observatory. Its job will be to study the laws of nature on astrophysical objects that we can't recreate in labs here on planet Earth. So we'll use the telescopes on XB to observe them in parts of our universe. Over the next month, the satellite team will conduct checkouts of the vehicle. They'll extend a boom that holds three telescopes on the satellite, and then they'll start to begin, uh, they'll start observing some of those astrophysical objects. The first one will be a supernova remnant, so the remains of a stellar explosion in we'll the Cassiopeia here. constellation. Uh, it's an object that's about 11,000 light years from planet and Earth. And payload separation confirmed. So there's confirmation of payload separation. The XB satellite floating away from Falcon 9's second stage to begin its two-year mission to study some of the most energetic objects in the cosmos. And with that, it's uh, going to end our webcast coverage for today. Uh, we thank you guys for being with us as well. Let's keep that live view up as long as they have it of uh, XB floating off uh, on its uh, new mission. It'll, it'll take about a month for it to be fully commissioned uh, before they're fully into all of their science. Uh, but uh, they are on their way in the orbit and the inclination that they wanted, uh, which is uh, just showing how reliable Falcon 9 is, its first equatorial launch. But uh, with that, we're going to wrap up here for this evening. Thanks for those who tuned in with us tonight and uh, to those that have been with us over the last 36 hours, number of launches and dockings. We're glad to have you all here. Uh, take a moment, hit that like and subscribe button if you are new. Uh, and we will see you back here on Saturday for the launch of New Shepard with carrying six new suborbital space tourists up across the Kármán line. Uh, we've got James Webb coming up later in the month, a couple more Falcon 9 launches. Um, no more electrons this year, but there's probably another Soyuz or so, uh, and who knows what else they'll throw into the launch calendar as we count down towards the end of 2021, setting records for SpaceX and other space agencies, uh, for the launch frequencies of their rockets. But for now, that's going to do it for us here at the launch pad. This is Zach signing off. We'll see you in a couple of days and join us tomorrow at 1.30 for another interview with one of the new NASA astronaut candidates. We're introducing you to Jessica. So we'll see you then. But for now, this is Zach signing off. Have a great night.